All right, welcome back to the channel. Teddy Atlas got more disrespectful words for Adrian Bronner and Andy Ruiz. <laughs> man, this dude, I swear to goodness, man, this dude is a guy living in a glass house throwing stones. But let's talk about what Teddy Atlas has to say about Adrian Bronner and Andy Ruiz in this video. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. So Teddy Atlas, the ESPN, former ESPN comment commentator. He's also a trainer, uh, a boxing trainer. He trained Mike Tyson early part of his career. He he's very famous for rubbing little ball, little ball headed Timothy Bradley on the top of the head and yelling at people in the middle of the ring. I do believe he was also with Michael Moore. Um, you know, just a very, very loud talking, but you know, honest, honest from time to time type of guy, man. T Teddy Atlas is a bit of an enigma. Definitely knows his boxing though, without a doubt, but he had some things to say about Adrian Bronner and, um, Andy Ruiz, man, that I think are a little bit, a uh, little bit misplaced. One I think might be okay. The other I think is is misplaced. Now let's talk about the misplaced one first, because I feel like I am one of the very few guys that actually defend Adrian Bronner from a lot of the stuff that people talk about with Adrian Bronner. Now, obviously, Adrian, you know who Adrian Bronner is. He's a, I don't know how many times this guy won belts. I don't think he's ever been, you know. I think his last real championship was at a, is it was at lightweight. I think he might have also owned a part of a part of a welterweight title for a minute. But you know, he's just an enigma, man. He's somebody that you just don't know what Adrian Bronner is going to do. You don't know what he's going to say, but you know some, what he's going to do more than likely. You know, before too long, it's going to be something that you think is stupid. And what is he going to say? You know, before too long, it's going to be something that's going to make you blush. If you have the ability to blush, it's going to make you feel like embarrassed for him. If you're a fan, it might piss you off if you're somebody that doesn't like him. But that's been Adrian Bronner throughout Adrian Bronner's whole career. And so Adrian Bronner just recently got arrested, I do believe, for a DUI or suspicion of driving while under the influence when he was, I don't know, was he in Miami or something like that? But, you know, it's just something else that comes up with Adrian Bronner. Now, usually these type, as this has been pointed out by somebody else to me, usually when these type of things happen with Adrian Bronner, it's usually right before he announces that he's going to have a fight or something like that. So with Adrian Bronner, you always got to wonder whether or not there's some purposeful mischief going on to attract people to his name to help sell a fight. Or if it's really is just that he is just always involved in some type of buffoonery. I think it might be a combination of the two. Now, what did Teddy Atlas say? Teddy Atlas says that that Adrian Bronner needs help. Somebody needs to help the guy because he's ruining it because he's ruining his life. Right. And I don't buy that. OK, I don't. I think that sometimes what we do, when we look at athletes because it's because there's so much out there in the forefront and we know what's right. We know what's riding, what their behavior is, um, what's riding in their life on their behavior, that sometimes we take it and we make what they're doing a little more large. We make it larger than life and we make it a bigger deal than it actually than it actually is. Now, it might actually these things might affect their careers. Like take, for example, um, Something that one of my favorite fighters, Errol Spence Jr., likes to do, and I say this pretty much all the time, but, well, one thing that he says is right after he's training, they say, say, what are you going to do when the fight is over? And he says, well, I'm going to get myself a brown something, get myself something I can buy in a brown paper bag where the grease flies all over the brown paper bag, right? That's one of the things that he says he looks forward to doing right after, right after a fight. Now, if... What would, and then you, as a result from guys like Bomack, um, who's a trainer of Terrence Crawford, he gets criticized for not being serious, not being serious about his craft. Now, is one bag of of greasy food going to ruin Errol Spence Jr.'s fighting career? More than likely not. Is it something that he should be engaged in and doing if he's trying to optimize his boxing career? Probably not. 
right? Shouldn't be drinking, shouldn't be shouldn't be smoking, shouldn't be eating fried foods, right? You shouldn't stay up. You know, you shouldn't stay up past, you know, past 10 o'clock at night. You need to make sure even when you're not working, even when you're not in camp, that you're getting your three, getting your three, four miles in a day and you don't let your body weight get too, too high. You know, you can leave, lead the, 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 the life of a warrior, right? That Bernard Hopkins led and, uh, and Floyd Mayweather Jr. led. That's how you should behave. 100%. That's how you should behave. But that's not how most people behave. And there are fighters that did not behave like that, that had very, very fulfilling careers. People that had um, and have continued to have very fulfilling life life uh, styles like take, for example, uh, Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar Ray Leonard is a guy that I don't believe lived like that. Now, he looked like he was always in shape. But, you know, we know that, you know, later on that, he, you know, he took a little sniff of this here. He might have taken a little puff of that there. Definitely took a swig of this here and there. And as a result, hey, man, but, you know, that that's not how he's supposed to live. So looking at Adrian Bronner, that's kind of how I see Adrian Bronner. You know, Adrian Bronner does, a, you know, Adrian Bronner obviously does drink. Adrian Bronner obviously does party. Um, but Adrian Bronner is somebody I still think in his career that is overachieved. I've never really thought, I mean, I thought that Adrian Bronner was a very, very good lightweight. I didn't like him for 140. Don't like him for 147. 154, obviously, is way out of the, out of the, out of the, out of range for him. But he's gotten, I think Adrian Bronner got the most out of his abilities as a fi fighter, seeing as this dude is still a draw. And a lot of the reason that the dude is a draw is because of the buffoonery that he does outside of the ring. So with him, it's like his buffoonery outside the ring really does almost make up for the fact that he's had that his boxing skills and all that have not didn't pan out to be what a lot of people thought he did. But I don't think that means that the dude is ruining his life. Right. Is he do? There's a lot of stuff that people doing to, you know, ruin their lives, you know, like really getting on some heavy stuff, you know, stuff that you have to need. You need a needle to inject in yourself. You know, he's not out there. You no, know, he's not out there, you know, like living his life like you know, I certainly hope this guy gets better. He's not in a situation like Jermaine Taylor. So to have Teddy Atlas just kind of sit on top of him and preach down on him like that, I think to myself, hey, Teddy, aren't you the guy that sh pulled a gun on Mike Tyson? I mean, I have all the things that I know that Errol, that, that um, Adrian Bronner has done, I don't know if there's anything that I've known that has been that stupid. You're going to actually try to shoot you you wanted to shoot Mike Tyson because of an issue that he had with your niece or whatever. I think that might have been a terrible decision if you that very well could have been very went very 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 wrong. Teddy Atlas and Teddy Atlas to me does not seem like the guy does not seem like an innocent um you know like an innocent bystander type of guy to me. But like I said before, his his life is not all out in the front like Adrian Bronner's. Same thing with what he said about Andy Ruiz. You know, now, Andy Ruiz, I think he might have a good, solid point about Andy Ruiz. Andy Ruiz, he said, you need to treat him like a drug addict because his drug is food. That, I think that's got a lot. I think that that is some real validity to that as well. But even then, that is going to work for like a camp with age, with with um, Andy Ruiz. Andy Ruiz has to treat Andy Ruiz like he's a drug addict and food is his drug. And only when Andy Ruiz hits rock bottom is that going to fix is going to fix itself permanently. It's not going to fix itself permanently by a trainer. It might work for a training camp where a trainer stays on him and does all that. But as soon as he gets that feeling of success again, more than likely, Andy Ruiz is going to be right back out there eating tamales, hanging out with his hanging out with his boys, knocking back 40s, doing whatever he's doing to enjoy life, man, because he's clearly boxing. So that he can enjoy his life, to find a way to live his life. He's not boxing necessarily, at least from what I can see, for the same reasons like a Floyd Mayweather Jr. did it. Floyd Mayweather Jr., I do believe, trained because he just wanted to be the best. He wanted to be the best that ever did it. He was well past the point of having enough money to take care of himself for the rest of his life. And he did a lot of the things that he wanted to do outside of the ring. Did a lot of the things, I'm, you know, he had hanging out in the middle of the night at strip clubs. But what does he do? He runs on the way home from the strip club. So everything that he's doing that is nightlife, he's 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 uh, has a counterweight 
uh, attached to it. And that would be some exercise or something that would that pushes him forward in boxing. He didn't smoke. He didn't drink. He wanted to be around people that did. So he would get people the stuff that they wanted to drink. He'd probably get people the stuff that they wanted to smoke. But so he wanted to be around that situation. But he kind of bottled himself up and made sure that he didn't participate in it. But that's because of his desire to be great in the ring. And Andy Ruiz just might not have that same desire. And if that's not his aim, if that's not his desire, it's just not his desire. And he's going to go as far as he can go in his career with, you know, with the goals and the desires that he has. Same thing. Same thing goes for Adrian Bronner. Adrian Bronner went as far as in his in his career as he wanted to go in his career. And because I'd ever believe that you can tell by his actions that he never really had it in his mind that he wanted to be the absolute best that he can be. And it's only when those two type of guys make those decisions or that that for themselves that all that stuff's going to go away. And more than likely, it's never going to go away just because a trainer yells in your, in your ear and insults you. But that's my take on the issue. You let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.